Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters, and, and welcome to our sacrament service today. And the date is today is, let me have a look, the second, it's the second of the 11th. Yep, and everybody's getting ready for Christmas. Uh, the adverts are coming on now, and we've got Christmas films on. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. So, of course, Christmas is where we celebrate the birth of Jesus. So, yep, hopefully you've got your uh, emblems ready and your wine. Carl's already prepared that. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you'd like to bow your heads, kneel, or whatever, and I will say the blessing on the bread. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. 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 So thank you for your reverence, brothers and sisters. And uh, we're going to go to Kyle now, who's going to bless the wine or the water, whatever you have. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever preference is better for you. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this water to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I'm going to be talking about Moroni chapter 6. And it's chapter 6 in both the RAV and the OPV. The RAV is the Community of Christ, or RLDS, uh, Reorganized Latter-day Saints Traditions uh, version of the Book of Mormon. And the OPV is the one the Brighamites, the Salt Lake City Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints uses. So it's chapter 6 for both of them, but it's 6A for RAV, Six five for OPV, and the church did meet together oft to fast and to pray, and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of their souls. So I want to ask you, how often are you meeting with the church? I read recently that studies show that people aren't looking to religion for answers anymore; they're looking for community, and especially after COVID, that makes sense. People saw what it was like to be isolated. And yeah, you know, we did a great job during COVID. We had uh, Sabbath services every Sunday. And I, I, I typically worship, I do, I do a Saturday Sabbath. Um, but traditionally in Christianity, Sunday is the day. And so that's what we offered. We had meetings throughout the week. We did everything we could to make sure people did not feel alone. 
and once COVID was over, people, they wanted to be around other people. So they started going to local community events. Makes perfect sense. What are we doing as a fellowship so that we as a church can meet together often to fast and to pray and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of our souls? I remember when I was a member of the Brighamite Church, the one thing I always hated was, especially when I was in the singles ward, it seemed like at least one Sunday a month in the singles ward, it's like, okay, it's time we're going to have a special, a special presentation, a special meeting, special Sunday service where we're just going to talk about missionary work. It's like, are you serious? We, we do this like all the time. It's all we ever talk about is missionary work. And the fellowship, it's a little bit different. We don't really talk about missionary work because we're not really a missionary oriented church. But what we do talk about is fellowshipping. And yes, this is another one of those, oh no, Dave's going to talk to us about getting out of our hiding holes and leaving our comfort zones and talking to other people. Introverts, unite. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what my message is today. We're putting all these things together and we want you to come. We want you to be there with us. Believe me, I've talked to a lot of you guys individually. I, I get it. I've gone through the spiritual PTSD myself. I still have it. I'm so thankful for my friend Scott, who at a time when I was really struggling, just out of nowhere, called me up once a week and, and chatted with me until I got out of my dark place. So, you know, I get what you're going through. Just like my friend was there for me, I want to be there for you. I want to help you get out of this darkness that Satan has put you in and help you get back into fellowshipping. I, I genuinely believe that the reason the Lord gave us this name, the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship or the Fellowship of Christ, is because we're supposed to be meeting together. We're supposed to be a community. And we can't do it without you. We, we just can't. So I, I want you to come and see. I want you to come and participate. I want you to come and be a part of this. I know it's hard. I, I know that you've been hurt. But we can't be a safe place without you here because you're going to keep it safe. You know what happened to you and you're not going to want to let it happen to anybody else. That's one of the reasons you are so important. So let's build this harbor in the storm together. Let's be a place where the church can meet together off to fast and to pray and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of our souls. Why can't we have a Saturday meeting and a Sunday meeting? Why can't we have a Wednesday night meeting where we take the sacrament? We can. We just need people to come and participate to make it happen. So, we need you. I want to share something else with you along the same lines. This is something that, that I've been thinking about quite a bit recently. Um, as you guys know, if you're familiar with the fellowship, you know, I should say, Christine had a revelation. And, um, sorry, this is kind of off the cuff, so I don't have it ready. i got to look it up real quick. Here it is. And that revelation... Uh, it's on the website on the front page down at the bottom. It's uh, Together in Sisterhood. It's very, very short and very, very powerful. And what does it say? It talks about the sisters gathering. My daughters have too long been pushed down, their voices silenced, and their priesthood power and authority ignored. In these the latter days, I have set into motion the circumstances and provided the tools needed for my daughters in Zion to reclaim their spiritual power and their birthright. I command my daughters to amplify their voices together in sisterhood and uplift and enrich one another so that balance between my sons and daughters can be found on the earth once again. Skipping down to the bottom, I have more to say to my daughters, but for now, this is enough. Organize yourselves together as a sisterhood and I will make my will known as it benefits my work. Amen. We have ordained so many sisters. And yet, how many of them say, I'm not worthy. I've been taught my whole life that as a woman, I can't do this. It's nice that I have this for an emergency situation. But it's not my place as a woman. That's not what the Lord says here. 
Not at all. It says that his daughters have been pushed down and their voices silenced. And I want to testify to you right now that they are still being pushed down. The sisters are still being pushed down right now. I want to encourage, if you are a sister and you're watching this, I want to testify to you that this revelation that my wife received, that Christine received, is of God. I was there when she received it. She went into the office to pray alone by herself. And she was in there for a very long time. And finally, I, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me it's okay to go and check on her. And I did, right as she was wrapping up. And when I read this, I was overflowing with the Holy Spirit. I knew as I read it that this was of God, that this was a revelation from a prophetess to the sisters. And I mentioned this in my testimony of Emma Smith. I don't have the authority to tell the sisters what to do. I did not have the authority to receive this revelation. It had to come from a prophetess. It had to come from a woman. What do we do, brothers and sisters? What do we do to let the sisters know that they should meet together often to fast and to pray and to speak with another concerning the welfare of their souls? What can we do to fix what Satan has broken, which would be their spirits? I don't know there's anything as a man that I can do except be supportive and encourage this action, this, this commandment of the Lord to be done. This is the will of God. I want to share one other thing with you, brothers and sisters, and this, this will be in closing. I'm not going to make this too long. And this is a revelation I received June 21st of 2021. I had prayed asking about witnesses for the, the plates of brass. And the Lord told me, um, you can find this in the uh, in the, the Torah of Moses. I mean, it's on the website, but in the Torah of Moses, it's actually before the Torah of Moses. Starting verse 20, it says, And now wherefore thou, David, have asked me, for witnesses of the plates of brass, that men and women should know and testify that thou art my servant, and of these records which I have given thee to translate by the gift and power of God, even as did my servant Joseph. And I say unto thee that I am thy witness, and that those that I have called, those that have read the Book of Mormon, and know it to be true by the power of the Holy Ghost, and by the spirit of prophecy and revelation, shall know, even as my Israel did know, to answer together as one saying, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So too will these be thy witnesses, for they shall testify of me, and that the work that I have given thee is mine. Yea, they shall read it, and fill with my spirit, and resting in my presence, they too shall say, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. If we want to see a true witness that this book is of God, it's not going to be about building a church. It's going to be about fellowshipping as saints. It's not going to be about you leaving whatever branch of the movement you're a part of. It's going to be about you just wanting to be a part of community. Well, what are we waiting for? What's stopping us? Have you said in your heart all that the Lord has spoken we will do. That's really my question for you. Because if the answer is yes, then we will, as a fellowship, meet together often to fast and to pray and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of our souls. In closing, I want to remind you what it takes to be a member. We've got about, what, 500, 600? We have hundreds of people that claim membership. But what does it mean to be a member of the fellowship? This is Article V, Membership from Doctrines of Saints 3C. Membership of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship shall be eligible to all who give evidence to their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and who voluntarily hold to the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. When a person chooses to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship and involve themselves, 
they are automatically considered a member. So part one there, you have to desire membership. And we have hundreds of people who have signed up that desire to be members. But the second part there is the part where we're struggling, and that is and involve themselves. So I want to ask you, how can you involve yourself more? How can you be a part of this community? A member is one who attends regularly, serves at, and contributes financially to the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship and can answer the following questions in the affirmative. Do you desire to come into the fold of God and be called a part of his fellowship? Have you confessed your sins to the Lord and repented of them? Are you obedient to the laws of the land? Are you willing to bear another's burdens that they might be lightened? Are you willing to mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort? Are you willing to stand as a witness of God at all times and in all things and in all places that you might be in, even until death, that you may be redeemed of God and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that you may have eternal life? Are you willing to continue in obedience to the laws of God in Jesus Christ as you understand them? And the best part, and I've talked about this when talking about our uh, statement of inclusion, membership, ordinances, callings, and fellowship are open to all regardless of race, gender orientation, sexual orientation, or marital status. So really what we need to be focusing on now is building this community, getting people to attend regularly, to be a part of the fellowship, not just by watching these videos or reading blog articles, but by really being a part of our community, fellowshipping one another with the saints. That's my message to you, the Sabbath service, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'd like to thank uh, God for blessing the bread there. Uh, yeah, Lord. so lots of things happening Next week, uh, it's fireworks night. We just had Halloween. Uh, and we got bonfire night <coughs> on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, November the 5th. So it would be fireworks all over the place. And I just think of people that have got dogs or, or people that have been in wars and, and get a bit of a, what do they call that? post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. disorder so when they hear fireworks it upsets so we're thinking about those people and there is talk about making uh quiet fireworks <laughs> which would probably be a good thing where they don't make any noise so i may sound an old bore not liking fireworks but i don't <laughs> so, and i just think of the pets and people that it upsets so and don't forget cats. And cats, yeah. <laughs> and hedgehogs and all yeah. little creatures. Yeah, so my hedgehogs have got caught in the bonfires. Yeah. But I can remember as a kid we used to make a dummy and we used to go out and get some money, but I tend not to do that now. It's a bit dangerous being out late at night. So we think about them, think about the old people. It's getting colder now. Uh, on Thursday night, Hopefully our times will join together, correct, because we had to do it at 6.30 on the prayer night, and then it was 7.30 in America, but American clocks are catching up with ours this weekend. So we got prayer night on Thursday night, and then it's Sabbath again on the Saturday. So we hope you have a good week, and... Uh, from Kyle's bungalow in Clay Cross, we say au revoir. Au revoir. And shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Take care. Be safe. Bye.